Psalms 139. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the inescapable. Inescapable. So Lord, help, help us to understand your word, not just understand it, help us to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Psalms 139, we're going to start in verse 1. And it says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, and you understand my thought from afar off, and you scrutinize my past and my lying down are intimately acquainted with all of my ways. Okay, first thing I want us to understand is that God knows everything, and that word everything means everything about us. He not only knows what we're thinking, he knows why we're thinking it. Amen? Now, you know, if you, if you, if you fast forward into the Gospels, Jesus was always, always frustrating the plans of the Pharisees and the lawyers because he knew their thoughts. You know, and it's really hard to, to pull one over on somebody that knows everything that you're doing. And the thing I want us to, to really grasp this morning is that God is intimately acquainted with all of my ways. All right. He knows things that no one knows about us. And see, that's a, that's a challenge we have in the body of Christ because we are people of secrets, all right? We, we struggle with, with, with being uh, open and transparent in our lives because we have a tendency of uh, taking that wrongly, all right? Uh, someone can come in and they can, you can say, how are you doing? You know, oh, well, you know, I was talking with a brother this morning. Oh, I, you know, I've, I've, I'm having a bad day. Oh, I rebuked that spirit of bad confession. I go, all right, note to self, don't talk to this guy anymore. And we teach one another to lie. Okay? And we struggle with being honest about our situation because we don't want to get rebuked. Rather than when someone comes and we say, how are you doing? They say, you know, I'm having a rough day. Or, or, or you know, I, I found myself, uh, you know, I, 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 I got drunk the other night and I didn't want to. And, and just say, you, can I pray for you? And begin to pray God's strength. Begin to pray God's, God's blessing on them. Begin to pray God's anointing on them. And what happens is people will come to you for prayer because they know you'll actually help. So God is intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even though there are times in our lives as church folk, we don't want to be honest with folks. God always knows what's going on. You don't have to be afraid of him. Inside This morning in churches all across the world, there are people that are sitting in pews and chairs and things thinking to themselves, is today the day that my secret is going to come out? Is today the day that people are going to know who I really am? And I want to tell you, there is a God in heaven that is intimately acquainted with exactly who you are. And he sent his son to die on the cross for the penalty of your sins. And he has given the anointing of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and help us to overcome sin. And so your situation this morning is not hopeless. It's not a secret. Okay? Verse 4. Even before there was a word on my tongue, behold God, you know it all. God knows what I'm going to say even before I say it. Amen? Amen? Sometimes, sometimes we don't even know what we're going to say while we're saying it. You know, did, you, did you ever find yourself saying something, and even while you're saying it, you kind of go, no. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Therefore, 
Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Church, God does not condemn our weakness, but He's sympathetic towards us. He wants us to come to Him. He wants us to confess our sins to Him so that He may rescue us, so that He may give us mercy, grace, and help. He was tempted in all things, yet He didn't sin. People say, well, well, yeah, He did that because He was God. Yeah, absolutely, yes. That's why we can come to Him and find help. Back to Psalms 139, verse 5. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. God knows our past and our future, and He's got a hand in both of them. It's tragic when we... You know, when God tries to put his hand on our lives, we try to shrug it off. No, I, I, I got this. I can do this on my own. How many can say that didn't work out well for me? Amen. Verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high. I can't attain it. We cannot know everything that God knows. Please understand that. You, you cannot know everything that God knows. All right. Well, you know, when God tells me everything about this, I'll see if it's something I want to really do. No, I want to encourage you to do it because God says so in the first place. And if you need to know the whys, he'll tell you. If not, that's all right, too. But please understand something. You don't know everything God knows, and you certainly don't know the future, even though we think we do. Books are written. Volumes of revisions are written. Amen? The rapture of the church, 500th revised edition. <laughs> it's going to be on this day, or this is going to happen, or this person's going to do this. And then very rarely those things happen. Why? Because we're not God. Now, is there going to come a time where we're going to meet the Lord in the air? Sure there is. The Bible says that. But do yourself a favor and focus on what you do know, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Leave the rest to the Lord. Amen. In Romans chapter 11, oh, let's see what that says. I can only talk half as fast. I got one hand today. Verse 33, it says, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and unfathomable are His ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become His counselor? Or who has first given to Him that He might be paid back again? For from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be glory forever. We only understand to the degree that God shows us. Amen. You say, well, how can, how can I know more? How can God, can I, can I be in a place where God can show me more? Be close to Him. Spend time with Him. Verse 7, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in, in hell, behold, you're there. If I take wings of dawn and if I dwell in the remote parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me in your right hand will lay hold of me. There is nowhere that you can go to escape someone who's omnipotent, who's omnipresent, who's omnipotent. Okay? There's nowhere that you and I can go that God is not there. Amen? You look at Jonah, and he's like, I'm going to run from God because I don't like what he's telling me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on a boat, and, and that didn't work out, so chuck me in the water. They said, okay, they chucked him in the water. A fish come up, swallowed him up. 
God, what does the Bible say? The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Even in the depths of the sea and the belly of a fish, God still spoke to him again. I want to tell you something. That's, that's one of my, my, my favorite scriptures in the Bible is the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Even when we screw it up, God says, I'm not done with you. Amen. There's nowhere we can go. Yesterday at uh, our memorial service, we, we read Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet water. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear evil. Why? Because he is with me. He is always with you. God will lead you along paths of righteousness. If we find ourselves straying from those paths, we're still not far away from God because He will come and bring us back again. Amen. The quality, the quality of that coming back is dependent upon you and me. All right? Some of us uh, will be led back with, with great repentance. Some of us will be led back with great somberness. Some of us will be led back kicking and screaming. But believe me, God knows how to get a hold of us. Amen. If I say, surely the darkness has overwhelmed me and the light around me will be night. There are times in our lives when we are absolutely clueless as what's going on. It's like I'm, I'm just in darkness. I have absolutely no idea what's going on around me. Okay. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? Life has kind of gotten, you thought you knew, all right? Oh, yeah, I know, I know exactly what's going to go on. And then all of a sudden you reach this place where you go, I have no idea what's happening right now. I've said this before, I'll, it bears repeating again. Years ago when we, when we uh, began to lay the, the framework of, of, for this church here in Nampa, uh, it was the late 80s, and uh, I was pastoring at another church at the time, and God was dealing with me about coming to Nampa, and, and I wrote down a, a plan and a, and a vision statement and everything, and it was, it was beautiful. It was a work of art. Uh, it never happened. <laughs> Why? Because I thought I knew. The only thing I got right was the name of the place we were going to. Amen. But see, there are times when we just come to the place where we say, Lord, I don't know what's going on. And at best, I'm ignorant of my con condition. And uh, darkness kind of overshadows us. Sometimes we even begin to question what we thought was right. You know, we always tell people, never doubt in the dark what God has told you in the light. Okay? Because when darkness comes, we begin to doubt what's going on around us because we're not sure of what we think we see now. Verse 12 tells us, even in darkness, even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. God is not hindered by any of this. Even though there are times in our lives when we thought we knew what was going to go on, we thought we knew what was happening, and we only to find out we we're completely ignorant as to what's going on. And we even begin to question, am I even in the right place? Am I even doing the right thing? God is not hindered or swayed by that at all. He is our only hope. There's no counsel or trick that the enemy can come up with that catches God off guard. All right, God is completely 100% aware of what's going on all the time. All right. 1 John 1.5 says, This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. 
God knows every single thing. Please understand that. Now, we, we struggle with that sometimes because God doesn't always share that information with us. Well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do, so therefore God must not know either. Because if he did, he would tell me. No, God always knows. He always knows. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment you'll condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. The key thing I want you to, to understand, your part in that is to be a servant of the Lord. Okay? If, if, if you're not a servant of the Lord, if you're a servant of the enemy, yeah, then yeah, his, his weapons are going to probably prosper against you. That's why we need to give ourselves unto the Lord. We need to submit ourselves to him. We need to follow after him. Because it's in that that we find our safety. But see, that can be problematic sometimes because we don't always like doing that. Because we like to be in charge. Or may I say, we like to be in control. Amen? You can say amen or oh my, it doesn't matter, you know. But see, we, we, we come across times in our lives when we find ourselves, as much as we want to be in control, we're not. Because life is just funny about that. John chapter 3 and verse 16, a very familiar scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God didn't send his Son in the world to judge the world, but that the world be saved through him. That's God's plan for you. God's plan for you is to be saved. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe in him has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and doesn't come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light, says deeds may be manifested, has been wrought from God. See, when we walk in darkness or we walk away from God, we deceive ourselves into thinking that he doesn't see us. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to quit going to church. I'm going to quit going to prayer. I'm going to quit going to Bible study. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to alienate myself from my, from my Christian friends. And then God's not going to see what's going on anymore. Can I say to you, his eyesight is better than ours? Amen. <laughs> he sees. There is nowhere you can go. The devil will come and will say, well, if you just get rid of all this church stuff, you get rid of all this Bible stuff, then we can go back to the way it was and we'll be happy again. I wasn't happy back then. All right? I wasn't. That's why we did the things we did. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can't go back to it because you'll be miserable. Because you've tasted and you've seen that the Lord is good. And there's not enough self-delusionment for you to go back. Going back to 1 John chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and don't practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we haven't sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Walking in the light, I will tell you right now, will manifest your sin. And it doesn't matter who you are because we've all got sin that we deal with. 
And when you walk in the light, it's going to manifest that. And that is why the, the temptation so much is to try to hide ourselves because we, we struggle to deal with that because we want so bad to have it all together. We want so bad to be in charge, to be in control, to have other people think we're something that we're not. When God has called us to be truthful and He's called us to come to Him, Walking in the light, I will tell you right now, if you're going to walk with God, you're going to understand your sinfulness. But this is done in order so that it can be confessed and forgiven. Amen. We, we, we've used this example before, and I'll use it again today. If I was to, to, to close up the window, turn out all the lights, so it's absolutely pitch black in here, and set you off on the side of the room and, and put a candle over here, just a little candle, and, and you'd be standing over there and say, Lord, tell me about yourself. Well, I'm all right. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you know, I'm okay. Well, take a couple steps towards that, that candle. Well, how about now? Well, I, I forgot to tie my shoe. Well, I, 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 best, I best tie that. Well, take a few more steps. Well, you know what? I was in such a hurry this morning, I got my buttons all mis mismatched, and now I got them sticking up here, and, you know, and I, I should ought to fix that. Why? Because what happens is the closer you get to the light, the more of yourself is exposed. And you're able to see the things that are, that are wrong so that we can take them to God and get them made right. But when I'm in darkness, I deceive myself because I can't see it. The tendency is to say, well, well, you know, my, 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 my buttons are all messed up. I should ought to go back in there and pretend like it's okay. How many of y'all know that once you realize the truth, you can't go back to pretending it's different than what it is? Amen. Confession is not to inform God, but to recognize the truth. That's what confession is. I'm not giving God truth. I'm not explaining to Him what the truth is. I am confessing that I recognize the truth about myself. And what that does is it leads me to a greater truth. And that greater truth is that I can be free. I can be healed, and I can be whole. Amen. And that's what God wants for all of us. If you go to the end of Psalms 139, in verse 23, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there be any hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. I want to encourage you to, to make that part of your prayer life. Because we deceive ourselves so many times, you know, for whatever reason. And just say, search me, God. You, you, know, you, know, you know me. You know everything about me. Try me and, and know my anxious thoughts. Because many of us, we have those. We look at events going on around us. We look at things happening at our jobs and in our families, and it creates a, quite a bit of anxiety for us. And we think, does anybody know? Does anybody care? Yes, there, there is someone, and his name is Jesus. And if there's any, any hurtful way in me, lead me in the everlasting way. The thing that makes that tough Is I've got to, if I'm going in a hurtful way and I want to change to an everlasting way, that means I've got to be willing to change my direction. Okay. I need to recognize that His ways are better than mine. And that is an ego, cru ego crushing endeavor. Okay. Because we don't want to admit that we're doing wrong, you know. 
I mean, I don't mind c- confessing that, 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 you, that you've done wrong. You know, I mean, I can see that. I can... Sometimes I say, you know, I'm going down the wrong way. All right. How many times have you been driving and you, you don't know where you're going? Your wife says, I think we're lost. No, I'm just taking a different way. <laughs> it's a lot longer. <laughs> uh, it, but, you know, when, when we're able to do that, when we're able to humble ourselves, we can find the healing that we, that we so desperately look for. Let's pray about that.